Federal Government of Nigeria has activated the National Cholera Multi-Sectoral Emergency Operations Center. This followed the threat of cholera epidemic across the country, which suspected cases of 1,528 as of the 24th of June and 53 deaths recorded across 31 states and 107 local government areas. The statistics put the fatality rate at 3.5% since the beginning of the year. Director General of the National or Nigerian Center for Disease Control said that the outcome of the risk assessment by the center placed Nigeria at a high risk of coral transmission and impact. For this conversation, let's turn our attention to Dr. Nesochi Okeke Ibukwe, a medical expert and CEO at the Dr. Nesochi LLC. Good to have you here on this day. Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, if I may ask, for those that will be watching, how did this, how did this particular cholera outbreak start? Because a lot of people have, if you, if you can actually help us with that, a lot of people have said probably contaminated tiger nut drink and the rest of them, because I know people have been having cholera, mm -hmm. but not at this level. How did it become this, this fatal and at the point almost pressing the panic button here in Nigeria? Yep. So to put it in perspective, historically, um, cholera was actually uh, brought into Nigeria in about 1972. It's been endemic to Nigeria since that time. Um, around 1991 is when they had a very severe um, outbreak of cholera where the case fatality rate was as high as 12.9%. Um, per the World Health Organization, we typically want that case fatality rate to be less than 1%. Um, since the beginning of cholera um, coming into Nigeria, it's fluctuated between about um, 1 to 5%, um, except for that 1991 uh, surge. So with that said, this is something that's been with Nigeria for some time, yes. but over the course of time, we have these Outbreaks. Mm -hmm. Outbreaks are to be expected for a various range of reasons. Um, access to clean water, access to proper sanitation. So when you put those metrics into play, we always anticipate something like this is going what to happen. What anticipated this particular outbreak? Mm -hmm. It could potentially be um, by virtue of rainy season, um, excessive flooding, uh, contamination of water okay. sources. Have we really identified and pinpointed where the actual source was from? No, but that's what the um, evaluation and, and assessment that the um, health authorities are doing is all about at this point. Okay. All right, uh, doctors. Talking about evaluation, how would you assess government's response to the current outbreak and how sustainable? At the last count, we have uh, 22 states affected, including Lagos. Uh, how can this ultimately be contained? Mm -hmm. So, great question. So, in general, I think there's somewhat of um, a delayed response when it comes to these public health emergencies because we know these things are inevitable. It's only a matter of time before there's an outbreak, whether it's cholera or something else. So, we have to really look at the big picture. We have to look at what the long-term goals of um, government would be to minimize um, some of these outbreaks. Mm -hmm. So right now in the Emergency um, Operational Control Center, it has been activated. So they are getting uh, resources um, together for surveillance, to try to track cases, to try to offer um, treatment by a government for those who have been impacted, trying to see if they can procure um, vaccines, trying to provide public education. But at the, the bottom line is that um, we need a change in the healthcare infrastructure of Nigeria. If we don't have um, access to healthcare for all Nigerians, there's a problem. If we don't have good, clean water supply for all Nigerians, it's a problem. So we need to really look at the bigger picture and figure out how, through the course of time, they are going to fix this because guess what? At this point next year, we can be talking about another outbreak. Right, um, you've mentioned, we've spoken about the government, but my own question now has to do with the individuals, mm -hmm. because statistics are always very grim. Mm -hmm. First of all, they say that 8% of the population here in Nigeria practice proper hand washing. And open defecation is still one of the worst, if not the worst, globally. Because they say 48 million Nigerians still engage in open defecation. And all this, when you put that together, will help accelerate the cholera spread. 
So what is the role of individuals in ensuring that we do not have an epidemic? Mm -hmm. So on a community level, one thing the community can actually focus on, the individual can actually focus on, is adherence to proper hand hygiene practices. So what does that mean? You need to wash your hands with soap and water um, after you use the restroom, before you prepare your food. Um, ensure that your hands are clean. If you don't have access to um, water to do so, you can always use a hand sanitizer. But that's just a basic metric that one can use to minimize the spread. Again, the spread and the mode of transition is mainly uh, fecal oral. Um, the bacteria is uh, can be contaminated uh, due to feces, and it can get into water hands supply. My hands, my talk about open defecation is still very, that 48 million people. That's almost 25 percent of the population still practice open defecation. Correct. So, with that said, um, there needs to be a level of education um, as well. But when you put it into perspective, if there if there are individuals out there that do not even have um, access to uh, toilets, what are we supposed to do or what are they supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So again, it goes back to some of the metrics and measures that the government can take to potentially maybe provide uh, public toilets in certain hotspots in certain areas and regions so that there um, isn't that drive and that draw for open um, defecation. All right, All right Doctor. You. What are the major symptoms of uh, cholera and uh, to a large extent uh, what will happen if left untreated over time? Yes, we've we heard about the fatalities every now and then, but uh, uh, is there something more here? So when we talk about the symptoms of cholera, one of the major symptoms is acute severe diarrhea. Um, it's what we call um, rice water stool diarrhea. Basically, the diarrhea looks like if you wash rice, that um, milky kind of appearance. It's not just a regular appearance of um, diarrhea. So the diarrhea can be so profuse that you lose um, a large extent of fluid in the body, um, rendering one extremely dehydrated. When you have that um, extreme level of dehydration, that can translate into various things from seizure um, to coma to acute injury and worst case scenario is death. And this can occur from hours to five days of exposure um, to cholera. So um, immediate treatment is really what is needed and it is quite treatable mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But are there other ailments that fit that profile? of what cholera symptoms are. Mm -hmm. So there are other um, diarrheal mm -hmm. infectious yeah. um, disease, but what makes this one um, uh, more um, specific mm -hmm. to uh, what's been going on is the toxin that is released from uh, Vibrio cholera. So the bacterial culprit is called Vibrio cholera, and it actually releases a toxin in the small intestine. Um, thereby causing um, release of a lot of fluid that translates into excessive diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So when you're seeing this symptom of the um, rice water uh, diarrhea mm -hmm. in conjunction with um, potentially vomiting, um, extreme weakness, mm -hmm. um, those are things that you need to be aware of. And of course, if we are aware that there are um, there is a cholera outbreak and you are in an area where there is a hot spot of these outbreaks going on and you're experiencing some of these symptoms, that would be a cause for concern when you do start experiencing this profuse, continuous diarrhea. All right, so you, you mentioned or you just touched on treatment. So let's talk about treatment and the accessibility of treatment. Is it readily available? Is it treatable properly? And is it, is it, is it like like chicken pox, for example, that mm. as soon as you have it once, you grow immunity to it and you might never be able to have it again. Mm -hmm. So with cholera, because you are losing so much fluid and um, becoming dehydrated, the mainstay treatment is what we call oral um, rehydration solutions. Um, this is basically replenishing the body with the appropriate level of uh, fluids, salts, um, some sugars in there and that will, oh, exactly, that will help um, to get you back into that um, high volume state because one is at a low volume state losing all those fluids in the system. So it's quite treatable um, with the oral uh, rehydration solution. However, in severe 
cases, one may need um, an IV, intravenous fluid. So the key is actually if you are exhibiting some of these um, symptoms is to get evaluated to determine what your hydration status is. Um, you really need to treat it as soon as possible. It is quite treatable when you do have um, some of the oral rehydration So you know, drinking water does not, does, not, does not necessarily... No, so it's not just a case of just drinking water because the body is losing not only fluid um, and water, but it's losing certain salts um, and electrolytes. So it's key to actually get the appropriate um, replenishment. All right, we're calling an outbreak right now. Do we have the capacity, Nigeria, to contain it, as it were, depending on all the uh, measures you've just asked? And... Um, do we actually need to reach out, perhaps maybe to the UN or other global WHO, international agencies, your WHO, to get more, uh, you know, of uh, treatment, uh, medication? Yeah. So, in regards to um, treatment, I don't think there is a lack of the um, oral hydration uh, solutions. But I think when we talk about prevention, what we do have a lack of are vaccinations. Mm -hmm. um, vaccinations can help prevent this. Um, with that said, um, there are low levels of cholera vaccines worldwide. Um, so we really have to try to focus on what we can actually do at the present moment to help um, contain and curb the spread of cholera. When there's a low level of it, is it due to the lack of prevalence of cholera? Because there seems to be a, a reduced you know, uh, prevalence of cholera worldwide. So is that why there's a low level of uh, vaccines for, for this at the moment? Yeah, so um, there are various um, regions of the world yeah. where um, we see uh, cholera. So some African countries, Asian countries, it's rare to see it um, in the U.S. In the U.S., I would only see a patient with cholera that has traveled in a place where um, there's an outbreak and they've mm -hmm. come back and brought it yeah. back um, to the U.S. But the manufacturers, they have to have that drive to actually want to make and create enough of the vaccine mm -hmm. supply for the countries that actually need it. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. Um, also, are we at risk of having major outbreaks and also epidemics? Because you just mentioned vaccine here now, and it just juggled my memory because there have been talks. I have a little boy and... Getting vaccines right now are super, super expensive. And I always say that previously, vaccines were very accessible, but DSK, Sanofi, they've all left Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that means that a huge gap has been opened. And if vaccines are not easily accessible, that means we are just probably a patient away from an outbreak or an epidemic. The fact that they are exiting Nigeria, should we be worried? And how can the government ensure that they plug in those gaps and those leaks to ensure that vaccines, like you've just mentioned, for cholera are accessible? Because if it's expensive, people will just pass by and have issues in the future. Mm -hmm. So a few things for consideration. Perhaps um, instead of trying to determine if we can procure some of these vaccines elsewhere, we can invest um, more money and funding to try to create them here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, to have that actual access based on what we've created um, in Nigeria. So that's one um, point of consideration. Um, without the access to vaccines, we can still potentially curb that spread with just the um, preventive measures. Um, the bottom line is if we do not um, halt the spread at this time, there is a possibility for this outbreak to continue and um, transition into something a bit more severe. Mm -hmm. Right now, Nigeria is at high risk. Um, you mentioned earlier the 3.5% case fatality rate. We don't want it to surpass that. We want to bring those numbers down. But if we don't implement some of these preventive health, public health um, metrics to try to curb the spread, then we might be in trouble. And uh, we might uh, just add that uh, it's like uh, 22 states and counting, as it were. Yes. It but hopefully it will be reduced. Uh, Dr. Nesochi uh, Okeke Bukwe, medical expert, uh, CEO Dr. Nesochi LLC, would like to thank you for your input and expert uh, expertise on that. It's good to have you with us on Newsday. Thank you for having me.